اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم سورة علم نشرح اور سورة الشرح تو سورة ہے سیورل نیمز آئی نمبر ون ٹو ایٹ سورة الشرح is a مکی سورة and it was revealed after سورة الضحا it has one رکوع eight verses twenty seven words and approximately one hundred حروف بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم علم نشرح لك صدرك Did we not expand for you your chest? وَوَضَعْنَا عَنْكَ وِزْرَكَ And we removed from you your burden. الَّذِي أَنْقَضَ ظَهْرَكَ Which had weighed upon your back. The Prophet ﷺ again is being addressed. In these two surahs, remember, the address is directly to who? The Prophet ﷺ. And a question is being asked. Alam nashrah laka sadurak. Did we not expand for you your chest? Meaning, of course we did. Qad fa'alna dhalik. We did expand your chest for you. Just as in the previous surah it was said, Alam yajidika yatiman fa'awa. Wa wajidaka dhalan fa'ada. Meaning he did. So it's as though the same theme is being continued. He bestowed so many favors upon you. And amongst the favors that he bestowed upon you, Alam nashrah laka sadurak. Did we not open your chest for you? What does it mean by Sharh al-Sadr? Sharh, by the way, literally, it is to cut something open. And when something is opened, then what happens? It expands. It spreads. So, Sharh al-Sadr is when the heart, or when a person understands, he comprehends something. When we say, Rabbi shrah li sadri. Oh my Lord, open my chest for me. What does it mean? That enable me to... fully understand make my chest so vast open it up so that what is being said can actually go in what I am trying to understand can actually go in it's not that it's too complicated too difficult for me to take in no sharh al-sadr is when a person comprehends something so it settles in his heart and then sharh al-sadr also includes that a person accepts what he has understood Because sometimes you understand a concept But you find it very difficult to accept Logically, okay, it makes sense However, you find it difficult to accept it So sharh is also to accept So we learn in the Quran that Whoever Allah wishes good for Yashrah sadrahu lil-Islam He opens his chest for him for Islam Meaning so that his chest opens up to it So he accepts Islam And then sharh sadr includes That a person is content to He is at ease with what he has comprehended, with what he has accepted. Because sometimes you accept something as well, but you find it very difficult. You take it, but you find it very difficult. So Sharh al-Sadr includes all of these things. When the truth becomes clear, when it makes sense to a person, he's able to accept it, and it settles in his heart. The heart is at rest with it. So, أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدْرَكْ Did we not open your chest for you? What does it mean by this? This is that we made it vast, we made it comprehend, accept, understand, and be at ease with the command of Allah, the hukum of Allah. Which hukum of Allah? The hukum of Allah that is shari as well as qadri. What is the shari hukum of Allah? The laws that He revealed. And what is the qadri hukum of Allah? The things that he has decreed in a person's life. So, أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدْرَكْ Did we not do this for you? That we enabled you to understand and accept and be happy with the decisions that Allah has made for you? With the commands that Allah has given to you? And this is something very true. That the Prophet ﷺ was able to accept the difficult circumstances that were made for him. the difficult, extreme difficult situations that were sent his way. أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدْرَكَ And we see that where other people could not have survived, the Prophet ﷺ, he remained strong and he was a source of strength for other people as well. In Mecca, the persecution was so intense, it was so difficult, that the Sahaba once they came up to him and they said, that pray to Allah for us. The Prophet ﷺ was reclining and he sat up and he got up and he told them that the people of the past were persecuted much more severely than you. A man would proclaim belief and he would be cut up from the middle. 
with a saw, he would be cut up from the middle. Imagine the kind of difficulties that the people of the past suffered. So his heart was able to accept the difficulties that Allah sent his way. And he was a source of strength for others around him as well. Think about it. If a child grows up as an orphan, typically, if there is a person who loses their mother or their father, or a mishap happens, you know, when they're young, it affects them so much that they're psychologically affected by it sometimes, or they cannot get over it. They constantly have self-pity, isn't it? And they cannot face the challenges of life. And what they blame is what happened in the past with them. That one incident, they cannot get over it. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the Prophet ﷺ's heart open so that he accepted, so that he was strong, he was confident, he was able to deal with the difficulties. And also that his heart was open to the shari ahkam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. How? That we see that we're performing the salah is so difficult for some people. In Surah An-Nisa, Ayah 142, we learn, وَإِذَا قَامُوا إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ قَامُوا كُسَالًا وَإِنَّهَا لَكَبِيرَةٌ إِلَّا عَلَى الْخَاشِعِينَ It is something very challenging, difficult for people. And if you ask many people, they will not find fasting difficult. They will not find many things difficult. What do they find difficult? Praying five times a day. But we learned that the Prophet ﷺ, what did he say? جُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي فِي الصَّلَاةِ جُعِلَتْ قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي The قُرَّةُ عَيْنِي The coolness of my eyes Meaning true comfort, true happiness Where do I find that? In prayer Amazing Where most people find it difficult to pray five times a day The Prophet ﷺ enjoyed praying Who gave him this blessing? Allah أَلَمْ نَشْرَحْ لَكَ صَدْرَكْ Did we not expand your heart so that all the difficulties and challenges in your life are able to accept them and deal with them? The biggest problems came his way. But he was so bold. He was so strong. Abu Bakr was freaking out in the cave. And what did he say? لَا تَحْزَنْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ مَعَنَا There was a huge blast, a sound that the people of Medina heard. And everybody got up to see what happened. And when they approached, they saw the Prophet ﷺ already coming back. He had already gone and checked what was happening. Imagine when he was sleeping. And this man came and he took his sword. And he said, who will save you from me? And what did he say? Allah will save me. And that man got so frightened, he dropped the sword. Any other person in this situation, what would he do? Scream out. Or he would start begging that please leave me. He was so bold. He was so confident. He had so much courage. Who gave him that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Alam nashrah laka sadaq. Did we not expand your heart for you? Did we not expand your chest for you? Wa wada'na anka wizrak. And we remove from you your burden. We remove from you your wizr. What does it mean by wizr? Wizard is from the root letters Wow, Zai, Ra And wizard literally is a burden And it's such a load that is heavy It's heavier than Hamal Hamal is also the burden But wizard is a much heavier burden It's a much heavier load And it's such a load that a person is carrying on his back Because it's used for some things that a person puts in a piece of cloth Ties them up and ties that to a stick and carries it on his shoulder. So imagine you have a whole lot of stuff in a bag and you're carrying it on your back. And as you carry it on your back, initially it's easy, but eventually it becomes difficult. Your back begins to hurt. This is what wizard is. Now the word wizard is used for sin. The word wizard is used for sin. And it's also used for a heavy responsibility because that also weighs down on a person. So, وَوَضَعْنَا عَنْكَ وِزْرَكَ We remove from you your burden. What does it mean by this burden? This burden, some have said, it refers to sin. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ, Allah forgave him completely for all of his sins, for all of his shortcomings. In Surah Al-Fatih, Ayah 1 to 2, we have learned, إِنَّا فَتَحْنَا لَكَ فَتْحًا مُبِينًا لِيَغْفِرَ لَكَ اللَّهُ مَا تَقَدَّمَ مِن زَنْبِكَ وَمَا تَأَخَّرْ Allah will forgive all of your mistakes, all of your shortcomings. Those that were done in the past and those that may be done now. 
So Allah forgave him completely. وَوَضَعْنَا عَنْكَ وزرك. We have removed this burden from you. So he forgave him completely. Now does it mean that the prophets of Allah, they commit sin? They commit them? I have told you earlier that for the prophets of Allah, what is considered a sin is something that is unacceptable given the status, given the position that they're at. For other people, it perhaps might be okay. However, for them it's not okay. Why? Given the high position they have. So, وَضَعْنَا عَنْكَ وزرك, We have removed from you your burden, this burden of sin. This is also with regards to other people, that the higher the status of a person is, the more is expected out of him. For example, a person who has knowledge compared to someone who does not have knowledge. Now, if a person does not pray, the one who doesn't have knowledge, yes, it's wrong. But the one who has knowledge... Yet he doesn't pray. It's much worse. This is why we learn that in the hellfire, a man will be brought and he will be punished in the most severest of ways and people will gather around him and say that you used to tell us what's happening. You used to tell us. He said, I would tell you, but I wouldn't do it myself. So this is true that the higher the status of a person, the more is expected of him. So, وَضَعْنَا عَنْكَ وزرك, We have removed from you your wizard. Some have said that this wizard refers to the wizard, the burden of lack of knowledge. And this is referring to the same state which was described as dal earlier. And now it is being said wizard because it was very heavy on him. Very difficult for him to not know what the reality was, what the truth was, which is why he would stay in seclusion away from the people. So, وَوَضَعْنَا عَنْكَ وزرك. We have replaced that wizard with knowledge. We have replaced that lack of knowledge with knowledge. And isn't lack of knowledge a huge burden? Think about it. Isn't it a huge burden? Yes, because you're confused. You're unsure. You don't know. So Allah removed that from him. And then others have said that wizard refers to the heaviness of the responsibility that had been given to him, which was extremely heavy on him at the beginning of prophethood. Remember that receiving revelation, yes, it was difficult. However, it was more difficult at the beginning, which is why Wahi would come with huge gaps, with long gaps in the middle. And initially, he felt it extremely difficult that he had to convey the message to so many people. So, وَضَعْنَا عَنْكَ وزرك. In other words, we have made it easy for you. We have made this responsibility easy for you. We have made receiving revelation easy for you. And this wizard was such that Alladi anqada dhahrak, which had weighed upon your back, anqada noon qaf dad naqd. Naqd is to break or to violate something. It also means to untie a knot, naqatul habal, to untie, open the twists, the knots of a rope. And anqada is to place a heavy burden upon something. A heavy burden upon something or someone until you hear the creaking sounds. Like, for example, if a person getting up from rukur, from sujood, then what happens? You can hear the sound from their knees. So when something is carrying a heavy load, then what happens? It almost breaks it. So, الَّذِي أَنْقَضَ ظَهْرَكَ It had weighed upon your back, meaning it was very difficult upon you to carry that burden. It was so difficult that how am I going to convey? Or what am I supposed to do? What is the purpose of life? And the wahi itself was also very difficult for him initially, but then gradually Allah made it easy for him. Alladi anqada dhahrak. Warafa'na laka dhikrak. And we raised high for you your repute. Warafa'na. And we raised. What did we raise? Laka for you. Dhikraka. Your mention. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted his messenger fame. Allah granted His Messenger a good name. How? How is it that His dhikr, His mention, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has raised it? In so many ways. That first of all, His name is mentioned when? In every salah. How? That before the salah is the adhan. And in the adhan, Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashadu anna muhammadur rasulullah. 
So his name is mentioned. And five times a day the adhan is pronounced. Five times a day. Five times a day. Just imagine. And there's always a part of the world where some salah or the other, the time of it is entering. So as it's entering, the adhan is being pronounced. Constantly round the clock, the adhan is being pronounced. So that means the Prophet ﷺ's name is being mentioned. وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ لِكْرَكَ then secondly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also made his mention great how that in every salah we are required to send the salat on the Prophet ﷺ in the tashahud. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad. So rafa'na laka dhikrak. And this is an obligation. This is something that's fard. And then thirdly, rafa'na laka dhikrak in another way as well. That every time a believer performs a ritual, an act of worship, whose instructions, whose way is he following? The Prophet ﷺ. Just imagine. A person is performing wudu, he is fasting, or he is doing dhikr. Hmm? The way he is wearing his clothes, putting the right hand in first. The way he is walking out of his house, entering his house. As he sits in the car, reads the dua, I mean, in every act of worship we perform, whose sunnah do we follow? The Messenger wasallam. Automatically, that is fame for him. Automatically, there is good mention of his name. Because, think about it. You tell somebody to do something and they do it. Don't you feel happy? Don't you feel happy? You feel acknowledged. So, وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكْ وَرَفَعْنَا لَكَ ذِكْرَكْ Allah says, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى For indeed with hardship is ease. إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى Indeed with hardship there will be ease. Because if you put both of these surahs together, yes there was difficulty, there is difficulty, there will be difficulty. But with every difficulty there is always ease as well. With every challenge, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also creates ease. Now if you notice over here Al-Usr فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى In both of these ayat Al-Usr is مُعَرَّف بِالْنَامِ And Yusr is Nakira What does that show? That there is one difficulty However the ease Many there is one challenge, one problem. However, at the same time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has also provided ease. And that ease is of different, different types, in different, different ways. And this is so true. If you think about it, most of the times, are we ill? No. Most of the times there is ease. Then similarly, whenever there is some difficulty, along with that, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also gives ease. Notice it's not ba'da. What is it? Ma'a. That if you're facing one problem, at the same time, so many things are made possible for you. But what happens? We sit with that one problem, and we don't look at all the ease that Allah has created for us. What do we focus on? On the difficulties, on the problems. We just sit with them, and we complain about them, and we don't mention the blessings that Allah has given us. What have we been told? وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ so, For example, if you think about it, in Makkah, the Prophet ﷺ, yes, he had to suffer a lot of difficulty, a lot of hardship. But along with that, there was also ease. How? There were people who were accepting Islam. He was receiving revelation. Grounds were being prepared for future futuhat already. So, There is always ease with difficulty. And if a person truly believes in this, that yes, I am having this difficulty, however, there is some khair. There is some khair with this. There is something that Allah has made easy for me along with this. Then he can have a positive attitude. And only then he can survive the difficulty. Only then he can survive the challenge. Otherwise, the slightest thing is enough to make a person give up. So this is what gives a person confidence. That okay, if I'm finding it difficult in one way, at least there is ease in this way. So, فَإِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى إِنَّ مَعَ الْعُسْرِ يُسْرَى فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَرْ So, when you have finished your duties, فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ When you have become free, then فَانْصَرْ Then stand up. فَرَغْتَ فَرَغْ غَيْن فَرَغْ 
and faragh is to be empty, to be vacant, to be free. So when you have become unoccupied, meaning whatever work you were doing, now you're over it, you're finished with that task, then what should you do? Take an endless break? No. Fansab, then stand up. And notice the word nasab. Nasaba is to fix something. So fix yourself again. What does it mean? Fansab, bind yourself again to something. Enroll yourself in something. So fansab, because nasaba is what? To firmly fix something, right? So you have to firmly fix yourself. فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ fansab. And remember, fansab gives us two meanings. That first of all, fix yourself, meaning do something, stand up. And secondly, it also gives meaning of exerting your energy. Put in your effort. Fansab. Get busy in something else. Ibn Mas'ud who said that what this means is that when you have finished the performance of the fara'id, the obligations, then fansab meaning stand for qiyamul layl. Similarly, Ibn Abbas who said that when you're done with performing prayer, then fansab fit dua. Then start making dua. Mujahid said that when you have become free from some task of dunya, then what happens? Then you should get busy in some matter of the akhirah. What does this show? That a believer should never sit idle, empty-handed, with nothing. No, this doesn't befit a believer. Does it mean that a person never ever relaxes, never ever takes a break? No. The thing is that even the break that a believer takes, even that is something useful and productive. Even that is something useful and productive. How... So for example, if you are tired, you just mop the floor, just vacuum the floor, okay. Now you have to sit down. Okay, you're sitting down, but don't just sit idle with nothing on your lips, just thinking about random things. No, you can sit down and at the same time you could be doing dhikr. What else? For example, if you're tired reading, if you're tired studying, then perhaps you could listen to something, take a break and listen to something. Yes, spend time with your family and then when you're sitting with them, don't just talk about useless things, but talk about beneficial things. That even when you're sleeping, when you go to sleep, then follow the sunnah. That sleep with your wudu and sleep on the right side, say all of the azkar, and then your sleep will also be ibadah. You sleep with the intention that inshallah you will wake up the next day with more energy, you know, with the intention to do more tomorrow, so even your sleep will become ibadah. So the point is, that a believer never ever wastes his time. He never sits empty handed. He never spends his time with nothing. No. He's always busy doing something good or the other. When he finishes one thing, he starts something else. Because when a person sits idle, then what happens? Shaitan comes and distracts him. When a person sits his mind is not actively engaged in something productive, something beneficial, then what will he start thinking about? Negative things. You will think, I'm so tired. You will think, I've done so much. You will think, this is not fair. You will think, oh, this is so difficult. But when you're going, 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 when your mind is busy in productive things, then you don't get a chance to think about negative things at all. This is why we should never ever sit idle. Never sit with nothing in our hands. No. We should always be busy something good. There is a quote that a believer dies between two actions. One that he has just done and the other that he was about to do. About to do. So this concept of just taking a break where I'm just going to sit and do nothing. Well, can you turn off your brain? You can't turn off your brain. Your brain is constantly working. So when it's constantly working, you have to occupy it with good stuff. If you don't, bad thoughts are going to come. Shaitan is going to come there. So فَإِذَا فَرَغْتَ فَانْصَبْ When you have become free from one task, then get ready in something else. وَإِلَى رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ And what is it that you should do? That to your Lord, direct your longing. وَإِلَى رَبِّكَ فَرْغَبْ Incline, turn and hope, be desirous towards who? Your Lord. Pay your attention to who? To Allah. Direct your mind to who? To Allah. So even when you've just sat down after cleaning, after studying, pray to Allah. 
do his dhikr mention his name exalt his name just think about it there are so many things that you can do in a minute so many adhkar you can say in a minute there is a card on which it's mentioned as to how many times you can say different adhkar in just one minute for example astaghfirullah astaghfirullah if you try to say it in a minute how many times do you think you can say it around 40 to 50 times easily easily if you spend 2 minutes saying astaghfirullah you can follow the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam 2 minutes and how many minutes do we just sit on the sofa just sitting sitting doing nothing i mean you're taking a break okay your back is hurting you want to sit fine sit but don't sit idle make use of that time as well so fa idha faraghta fansab wa ila rabbika farghab and the thing is that every time when you think about allah when your mind goes to allah you will definitely engage yourself in doing something good whether it is dhikr or it is istighfar or it is talking about something good we learned earlier that wali kullin wujhatun huwa muwalliha every person has a particular wujha a direction that he faces like for example a compass wherever you put it will point towards north such is a believer wherever he is in whatever situation who is he facing his lord so his mind goes back to his lord his heart goes back to his lord so wa ila rabbika farghab pay attention direct your longing to your lord and when you will do that when your desire is to please allah remember him you will find something to do you will find something to do something to say then you will not sit empty handed you will do something you will make use of your life recitation bismillah of allah that is a waste of life and also turn to allah direct your longing to him so that he will create ease for you whenever you're in difficulty whenever you're lost you don't know what to do you think it's going to be too difficult the next task might be too challenging turn to allah he will help you he will make it easy for you When we are afraid typically what do we do we discuss the issue the problem with other people but we should also take time out to ask Allah for help wa ila rabbika farha and if you notice in the previous surah what did we learn if Allah helped you in the past he will help you again but for that you have to turn to him you have to beg before him and Allah has also promised inna ma'al usri yusra and twice he says inna ma'al usri yusra with difficulty there is ease so don't give up And this is true that in our religion there is definitely ease with difficulty. That for example in salah, if a person is unable to stand, what can he do? Sit and pray. If he's unable to do that, what can he do? Lie down and pray. Similarly, when it comes to fasting, if a person is able, he should. And if a person is not able, he can fast other days. Or he can just give fidya. If a person can't afford to go for hajj, he should go. But if he cannot, then hajj is not obligatory on him. So there is ease in our religion. Sometimes we just have this in our minds that I have to sleep after fajr. Similarly, we just have this in our minds. Religion is difficult. Deen is difficult. Get this out of your mind. Don't think it's difficult. It is easy. Notice how many times yusr, yusr, yusr has been said. So many times. Why? Because religion is easy and shaitan makes us think that it's difficult. It may be challenging but it is possible. This is why Allah says that fa idha faraghta fansab when you become free get busy in something else. Get busy in something else because as you become free from something time will continue to pass. You cannot stop the time. Can you stop it? You can't. You cannot stop the time from moving on from passing on. So you have to avail every moment of your life. You cannot waste even one. No person can pause the time. And we learn that in Surah Al-Jumu'ah, Ayah 9 to 10, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا إِذَا نُوذِيَ لِلصَّلَاةِ مِنْ يَوْمِ الْجُمُعَةِ فَاسْعُوا إِلَىٰ ذِكْرِ اللَّهِ وَذَرُوا الْبَعِيْ And then after that, when the salah is over, then what should you do? فَإِذَا قُضِيَةَ الصَّلَاةُ فَانْتَشِرُوا فِي الْأَرْضُ وَابْتَغُوا مِنْ فَضْلِ اللَّهِ If a person is busy doing something and then he stops, he takes a long break and then 
he starts to do something good again then he has to learn how to put in effort all over again because when you're on the go it's easy for you to keep going but the moment you take a break a long break what happens it makes you forget what you have learned so it becomes even more difficult it becomes even more challenging for example if you're used to walking every day and you walk every day for example an hour it's easy the moment you take a break getting back into it oh my god it's so difficult so this is why a person should always remain busy in doing one thing after the other because when you remain busy in doing one thing after the other then every new task you take it becomes easier and easier and easier and when you sit idle when you do nothing then even the smallest things appear to be so difficult and they do become very difficult because you're not used to it anymore children they end up saying i'm bored i'm bored i'm bored why are they bored why because they have nothing better to do so you should get them busy in something and the statement i am bored we should expel it from our lives completely remove it don't say that let's listen to the recitation of these ayat بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ألم نشرح لك صدرك ووضعنا عنك وزرك الذي أنقض ظهرك ورفعنا لك ذكرك فإن مع العسر يسرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته